don't consider a drill press an essential woodworking tool, but having one sure does make some boring tasks much easier and accurate. So if you've never used a drill press, I wanna show you some of its features and why you may wanna consider adding one to your own shop. This is my 20 year old 12 inch Ryobi drill press. This still works great and most of the features on this one are pretty similar to most of the drill presses today. They haven't changed a whole lot. The 12 inch designation refers to the distance from this back post to the drill bit, but doubled. Why? Because tool companies like to overcomplicate things, I think. So this one has a six inch throat, so it's, it's called a 12 inch drill press. I've seen some very inexpensive eight inch drill presses, but for woodworking, that four inches of clearance might be a little tight, so I would look into at least 10 inch drill presses or even 15 inch presses. One thing to keep in mind is that a drill press is not designed as a tool for woodworking only. In fact, most drill presses are probably used for metalwork and other tasks. You can spend a lot of money on features like a laser guide or digital readout, which would be more important for machining or tool and die work, but woodworking never requires that degree of precision or accuracy. So I suggest saving your money on the bells and whistles. There are two types of drill presses, smaller bench top models like this one and big heavy floor standing models. A floor standing press will have a lot more power and you can lower the table a lot further for big material and it probably will have a wider throat but again most of these features aren't that important when it comes to woodworking so why would you want to buy a drill press when you probably already have one of these well even though woodworking doesn't demand technical engineering level of precision there are times when having more precision and accuracy than a hand drill is useful. The most notable advantage is that any hole you bore will be perpendicular to your board, something much more difficult to achieve by hand, especially if you need to drill a bunch of holes at 90 degrees. Plus, the table tilts so you can drill holes at specific angles. One of the most useful features of a drill press is being able to set a depth stop. There are times where you need to drill a hole or a series of holes at a specific depth. For that, you just set this dial and the quill will stop when it reaches the depth you need. Similar to the depth stop, you can lock the quill into any down position. This can be useful for turning your drill press into a drum sanding machine with various sized sanding cylinders. I thought I had some of those drum sanding attachments, but I must have gotten rid of those when I got my spindle sander over there, so I don't really need them. But the idea here is that you would, you know, attach one of those here, move this down, and then you'll lock this into place there, and then it stays in that location. Then you would turn this on, and you could sand this way on the inside of a circle. Or you would just drop it down, something like that, turn it on, and you'd be able to sand the outside of the board. Sometimes you just need more power, especially when using big drill bits or even hole saws. Drilling a hole with a Forstner bit this size can be a real struggle by hand, but easy with a drill press. Drill presses are variable speed. In general, the larger the bit you're using, the slower you want the speed. A common way to change the speed is by positioning these two belts. There's a label inside of this lid that shows you how to set them for how many RPMs you want. probably a way to determine the optimum speed for the size of drill bit that you're using, but 
I've never worried too much about it. I just kind of guess. And honestly, most of the time I keep it set at a medium fast speed and only occasionally bother to adjust it. The table slides up and down the support column so that you can drill holes in various thicknesses of material. Most drill presses come with a very small table. I think this is because for most non-woodworking applications, a larger table just isn't necessary. Not everybody agrees with me, but I prefer to have a large table that can support longer boards. Plus, I like to have a built-in fence with a stop block so I can bore repeated holes in the same location. If you get a drill press, I suggest making a table for it to be one of your first tasks. I've got a video showing how to make this one. I'll put a link down in the description. I really think a drill press is a great addition to any wood shop, but only after you've picked up all of the essentials. If you'd like to see all the essential tools I recommend for starting a woodworking hobby, download my free guide over at mytoollist.com and learn how you can get everything for less than $1,000. Thanks for watching.